okay? But you're gonna like being in subjection under us. You know? You're gonna like it, man. You know, it's just e Esau gonna really, really catch hell. You know, the nation of Edom. They really gonna they really gonna catch they gonna catch a lot of a lot of turmoil and anguish, man. Because that nation brought it upon the nation of Israel. So they really gonna catch it. You know? Israel has a uh we have a knack of like basically the other nations, man. We know we know Israel is basically better than you, but we're we're gonna we're gonna basically let you have your own land and you gotta come worship us uh, around the Feast of Tabernacles when you read in the book of Zechariah. Now there is a count in the book of uh of uh Second Kings where we basically could have killed you, but we let you go. Let me find that. Okay, it's the account where it's the account where Elisha was with his servant. The Lord opened his eyes to see the chariots. Okay, now I'm gonna read. I'm gonna start at uh. I'll start at 18 and read down into it. And when they came down to him, Elisha prayed unto Yahweh and said, "Smite this people, I pray thee, with blindness." And he smote them with blindness according to the word of Elisha. And Elisha said unto them, This is not the way, neither is this the city. Follow me and I will bring you to the man whom you seek. But he led them to Samaria. And it came to pass when they were come to Samaria that Elisha said, Yahweh opened the eyes of these men that they may see. And the Lord opened their eyes and, and they saw and behold, they were in the midst of Samaria. It says, And the king of Israel said unto Elisha, when, when he saw them, my father said, Shall smite them? Question, shall I smite them? Right? And he answered, Thou shalt not smite them. Wouldest thou smite those whom thou hast taken captive with thy sword and with thy brow, with a bow, set bread and water before them, that they may eat and drink and go to their master. See, those are the other nations, right? So when he could have killed them, right? The king of Israel could have killed the uh, other nations, right? Which well, I think they, had, they were Aram, Aram, because the king that their master was uh, Ben Hadad. That was their master. When you read it, it's Ben Hadad, okay? Instead of him killing and slaughtering them, what did he do? He opened their eyes where they could see, and then he gave them like a, a little uh, banquet, gave them a feast, man. Gave them eat and drink. Then he told them, they sent them back to their master, man. Would the nation of Edom would, would, would have done that with, with the nation of Israel? No, the nation of Edom would have killed us, man. Because that's in, that's in the Edomites' nature, is to destroy the Israelites, man. And that's in their nature. And we know that because when we read Genesis the 27th chapter, when, when, when our father Isaac blessed us with the blessings, he gave us the blessings when he, he when he gave Esau, when he didn't give Esau the blessings of the kingdom, Esau uh cried and then he said this uh in verse uh 40, 41, and by the sword thou shalt live. Thou shalt serve thy brother. So is he serving us now? No. We're serving Esau right now. So this prophecy right here, it's a prophecy of the future which is going to take place, man. And it shall come to pass when thou shalt have the dominion that thou shalt break his yoke from off thy neck. And they broke away once, man. But we put them back in subjection against what? They came away again to build a desolate places. And it says, And Esau hated Jacob because of the blessings wherewith the father blessed him. Okay, so Esau hated Jacob, man. When does that change, man? You know? When 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 has that changed, man? When when has the Edomites really have love for the Israelites, man? It says, And by the sword thou shalt live, and thou shalt serve thy brother, and it shall come to pass that when thou shalt have dominion, that thou shalt break his yoke from off thy neck. And Esau hated Jacob 
Jacob because of the blessing wherewith his father blessed him. And Esau said in his heart, the days of mourning of my father are at hand because Isaac had died. Then will I slay my brother Jacob. Okay. He said he's going to slay his brother Jacob. So when, when, ha when has he treated us like, like we treated those uh, other nations? Sending them, gave them a feast when we could have killed them. Sending them back to being her dad, man. So you other nations gonna love it being being in subjection on us, man. You know we're gonna give you your own land. We're just gonna uh, uh, require that you come up to the tabernacles and pay your uh, your homage, man. You know, in that day. But when has Esau did us like that, man? Never, man. Because they made they made when you read in Psalms 83, they were the head of this council right here. It says, uh, Psalms 83 and 2, For lo, thine enemy make a tumult, and they that hate thee have lifted up the head. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people. They have taken a shrewd counsel, man, a hidden counsel. That's what they do. They go they go into these uh, uh, different places, man. They meet in these different areas, in these caves and, and whatnot, and they discuss, they discuss, think tanks and they discuss on how they're going to keep their they foot on the necks of Israel. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people and consulting against thy hidden ones. They have said, come let us cut them off from being a nation. See, they said, come let us cut them off from being a nation. Okay. And you would have to be totally wicked to like want to cut someone off from being a nation. man. That means you have to, you have to make up plans a uh, plan to basically take them out through through warfare, biological warfare, uh, poison of the food and water, uh, uh, just dest economic destruction, social destruction. You'd have to do all that in order to destroy someone from being a nation, man. You know, when they came in with Planned Parenthood and abortion, that was all for for Jake, man, because they know pursuing the Exodus, the first chapter, how we multiplied. How the midwives told Pharaoh and them, damn man, they having kids at alarming rate. The more we oppress them, the more they have kids, man. You know? They didn't they didn't they didn't even understand. They don't even understand if they didn't just shared shared the wealth with us and gave us a lot of money, we destroyed ourselves spending the money. They don't even know it. But when you oppress us, guess what? All we gotta do is what? Have a little drink and, 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 and ease our mind with, with having a little love making. So we continue. <laughs> hey man, we got hey, it's what it is, man. You know? And it says, they have said, come let us cut them off from being a nation. It says, uh that the name of Israel be no more remembered in him. And the Lord has said he will not forsake us in Deuteronomy the fourth chapter. He said he will not, he will not uh, basically forsake us and destroy us, man. He said this in Jeremiah. Even though Esau trying to take that counsel, this is one of these scriptures was it's, it's a faith builder when Esau is coming hard on us, man, trying to destroy us, man. When you read Jeremiah 31 and 26, it says, uh, uh, I started 35 It says Thus said the Lord Yahweh Which giveth the sun for a light by day And the ordinance of the moon And of the stars for the light by night So he created the moon and the stars And of the stars which light by night Which divided And the sea When the waves are up of their of roar. The Lord Yahweh of hosts is his name. Yahweh. He is. He exists, man. That's his name. And it says, if those ordinance depart from before me, said the Lord Yahweh, then the seed of Israel also shall cease from being a nation before me forever. So if the sun quit shining, right? If the sun quit shining and the moon and the stars quit giving a light by night, the Lord said he'll cease Israel for him and, and he bound by his word man and the light and, and the sun still shining 
The star still shining. The sun is shining by day and the star and the moon light the night. So you can't get rid of us, man. The Lord said he gave his word that he won't he would not forsake us. We're going through these hard times you see now because of disobedience, man. You know? The nation of Israel believing in the strongholds that Esau has put before us, man. Believing in these wicked imaginations. And the Lord said in Jeremiah the third chapter. He said Jeremiah in Jeremiah the third chapter. Jeremiah 3 and 15, I will give you pastors according to my heart, which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. He said, I'm going to give you pastors according to my heart that's going to feed you with this understanding, man, with this knowledge and this understanding, okay, of the scriptures. All right? Amen. And we thankful that the Lord has showed us and woken us up to this glorious truth. And showed it, showed it to him, man. Call Halal Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai, man. Rakata Yahweh Shai. You know, for showing us this, this marvelous word, man. And pulling us out of darkness and putting us into the light. You know? You know, we, we come out here, not only do we come out here for ourselves, but we come out here for the, the, uh, the elect brothers, man. You know? You see brothers gathered up, they come out there for each other as well, man. You know, we looking out for each other. When we come out here and push this word, we looking out for the hopeful leg. I get that for you right quick. As I said it, let me get it. Uh, let me see here. I think that's right here in, I wanna say, uh lock it, hold on, hold on. Okay. Come on, here it is right here. Uh this is uh first Corinthians ten. In 33, even as I please all men in all things, not seeking my own profit, but the profit of many, that they may be saved, man. So not only are we coming out here for ourselves, man, we coming out here that, that, that men may be saved, man. That a, that a elect brother might wake up. The Lord said, I'm going to give you those pastors according to my own heart, man. Okay? And we're breaking down these imaginations, man. You know? Because you got some of our people, our own people would think, man, them Israelites, I heard they were done away with. Well, who you heard that from? You had to hear it from, from, from uh, uh, your slave masters, the Edomites. Okay? You had to hear it from them. Esau. That's a stronghold that we're breaking down. That's an imagination, man. Those are the arguments that we're breaking down through the scriptures. You know? Because through religion, it binds you up and holds you back. When people say, well, you know, I grew up this and I grew up that. That's to hold you back, man. You need to come back to your laws and your statutes, man. And your commandments, your heritage of the Bible, man. And that's why we come out here week in and week out. Not only the prophet for ourselves, but the others we say who are the elect, man. Okay? And that was uh, 1 Corinthians 10, the last verse. Back in Psalms 83. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people and consulted against thy hidden ones, man. They have consulted against the hidden ones, okay? They have consulted against the, uh, the, the, the nation of Israel, man. said when I read right here uh, it said they have taken crafty counsel against thy people and consulted against the hidden ones they taken that crafty counsel 
to like make you know more a nation as it said also that that crafted council you have uh, uh when that time of jacob's trouble come when that when that time of martial law come they already are, they already making plans on how they're going to deal with the nation of israel and how they're going to get you to uh, uh, uh be under subjection under them and basically take their rfid chip this is the whole plan man of esau they are sitting back right now in think tanks planning on how they're going to destroy you okay and how they're going to destroy the men that are coming out here week in and week out man they have they have a, they have a, a plan right now to try to get us off the streets man and i even heard that from uh, uh right here uh from uh someone right here in, in, in uh, little rock man you know that they they making council crafty the council they didn't invite they didn't invite me to the council they didn't invite the other brothers uh, on the other end on this block. They didn't invite them to the council. You know? So they taking that crafty council, man. They, they hitting back, trying to get rid of the, the elect men, man. But the Lord said, hey, when they, in that time of trouble, uh, in that time of trouble, he's going to hide us in his pavilion. The Lord going to hide you in, in, in a secret place, man. You know? Matter of fact, I get that. Psalm 27. Psalm 27 in uh I start at one. It says the Lord Yahweh is my light and my salvation. He is that light, he is that weight. Right? He's of uh, salvation. He's a he's the way that's gonna lead us to that deliverance from my enemies. Whom shall I fear? Who do, who you gonna fear? Okay. Don't don't fear men. Fear the one who can kill your body and your soul. Fear Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai, man. Lord Yahweh is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? See, he's telling you. The Lord Yahweh is to, to whom you shall be afraid, man. Fear of the Lord is what? Beginning of wisdom. The beginning of knowledge and understanding is the fear of the Lord. To reverence the Lord, his name. You people are reverencing uh, uh, the stronghold of basically like Set Cesare Bozier, man. They have put that up for you to worship, man. Okay? This is, this is a stronghold, man. They have put this up for you to worship, okay? This is what they have put up for you to worship, man. And this is a stronghold, okay? They have put this up for you to worship, okay? So therefore, guess who you fear? You fear you fear the nation of Edom because they have put this up and told you that it was God. So guess what? You, you fear you fearing a stronghold, man. Which in all actuality, you're gonna fear you're gonna fear uh, uh, the nation of Edom. Spoken of the description of the true power spoken in Revelation in Daniel's 10th chapter. It says, verse 2, when the wicked, even, even my enemies and my foes, came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell, man. Right? Because the Lord said He's gonna protect us, man. In that time of trouble. He's gonna protect his his, his elect, man. And it says, though an host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Because Esau gonna come up against us, man, in that time of Jacob's trouble. They're gonna be coming with all their armies, man. They're gonna be busting down doors, right? They're gonna be uh, 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 vindicating people on the spot. They're gonna, they're gonna take some certain men of the Lord, certain men they're gonna kill. So if you have to be a martyr, don't be afraid, man. Just know that your spirit gonna be with Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shai. And you're gonna hit the heavens and be right back in the chariot, man. To bring destruction. Okay? Just know when you face with these trials, you have to be tried like the goal is tried. You're gonna be in entertainment camps, man. So they're gonna they're gonna do you like uh 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 the uh like it's spoken of of our fathers of old. They're gonna beat and torture us just like they did Paul and Peter. They're gonna scourge just the same way they did Yahweh Shai. 
if we suffer with Yahweh Shai, guess what? We're gonna we're gonna inherit the the blessings with Yahweh Shai and enjoy the kingdom with him also, man. Okay. And it says, uh, though it host sign fair. It says, though a host shall encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war shall rise up against me, in this I will be confident. Because that's what they're bringing. They're bringing war, man. Esau, Esau has been at war with Jacob for a long time, man. Ever since we read in Genesis, the 27th chapter, where he said, hey, the day of my father's at hand. Ever since that blessing was given unto Jacob, and now Esau to inherit the kingdom of heaven, he's been at war against us, man. Every time he's basically uh, in charge, he puts his foot on our neck, okay? But our people, they don't understand that. They want to walk hand in hand. But what does it say in Proverbs 11 chapter? No hand join in hand, the wicked shall not go unpunished. So if you want to walk hand in hand with Esau, then you're going to suffer the punishments, man. Because the Lord is going to destroy the nation of Edom, man. He's going to bring them down simultaneously, man, one step at a time. That first destruction is going to be here in the land of Arshus, man. The land of Canaan, the land of Babylon, many confusion, which is uh, uh, gloriously known as America, man. Yahweh Bashim Yahushai is getting ready to take this whole infrastructure of America out. Okay? And the scriptures tell you in the prophecies, if you look into the Bible, it tells you how the Lord is getting ready to take out this place. Read, read, uh, uh, read uh, Revelation the ninth chapter. Read Isaiah the 34th chapter. Okay? Go into the Apocrypha and read 2nd uh, uh, Ezra the 16th chapter. Read 2nd Ezra the 13th chapter. Okay. Read read uh Second Peter the third chapter. Read those, man. You know, read Zechariah the fourteenth chapter. You know? Read Matthew twenty-four. The Lord is getting ready to take this place out, man. Read Psalms ninety-one. Okay. And it says, uh Though a host shall encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Through war shall rise against me. In this, I will be confident, man. And they're gonna come. Like I said, they're gonna use uh, biological warfare. They're gonna use uh, uh, assassination, uh, character assassinations in that day. They're gonna bring us before judges. And the Lord said, "Be confident," because He even said, "He gonna He gonna uh, uh, let your mouth speak what you're supposed to speak in that day." You know? And it says, uh, verse 4, One thing have I desired of the Lord Yahweh that I will speak after that I may dwell in the house of Yahweh all the days of my life to behold the beauty of Yahweh to inquire in all his temple, man. And that's what we come out here for week in and week out to push this truth, man. That, that the Lord, amen, see us fit man to, to, to see his beautiful kingdom man on the on the first go round all Israel said gonna be saved when you read in uh, read in uh, Romans but guess what two thirds are gonna have to die on this side man you don't wanna be a part of that number that get killed man because death is that death is gonna be torturous on this side man you wanna make it out of here on the first on the first round you want to see the destruction of your enemies. You know? It talks about that in the Apocrypha, man. Uh, uh, matter of fact, let me get it. Uh, let me get that. get this scripture I think it's in the book uh Sirach. I think it is 25 Sirach 25 and 7 and it says there be nine things which I have judged in my heart to be happy 
in the tent I will utter with my tongue a man that have joy of his children and he that liveth to see the fall of his enemy man. so he says he that liveth to see the fall of his enemy man. so hey that's why that's why you want to be that's why you want to be on the first the first run you don't want to be part of that two-third number you want to be part you want to be part of this this uh you want to be part of this number here uh revelations revelations 15 and 1 and i saw another sign in heaven great and marvelous seven angels having the seven last plagues meaning but destruction for in them is is filled up with the wrath of the most high yahweh so in, in those plagues it's filled with wrath man it says i saw as it were a sea of glass mingled with fire and them that had gotten a victory over the beast and over his image and over his mark they had gotten the, the victory over the, the image of the beast the system and they didn't take the mark man they're standing on that sea of glass so when you be on the chariots guess what it's gonna look like you're standing on on a on, 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 on glass man it's gonna be looking like you literally you're literally gonna be getting beam through the fire man as it's spoken of in uh um, Zechariah the 13th chapter it says over the number of the name stand on the sea of glass having the harps of the hour singing that song man you know this is this is that you want that first ride out man you don't want to be part of the number when it says two-thirds gonna die man one third are gonna be tried. One third will be tried and brought through the fire. You want to be part of that that first that first wave that make it up out of here, man. You want you don't want to be a part of of, of the, the ones that are gonna be destroyed and having to be brought back through the elect men. Back in Psalm 27 and uh, five, for in the time of trouble he shall hide me in his pavilion. Okay, where is that pavilion gonna be at? Okay. What, what is that pavilion that he's going to hide you in? This is that pavilion. This is Isaiah 26 and 20. Come, my people, enter thou into thy chambers and shut thy doors about thee. Hide thyself as it were for a little moment until the indignation is overpassed. For behold, the Lord Yahweh cometh out of his place, out of the throne, to punish the inhabitants of the earth for their iniquities. So the Lord is going to come off the throne. He's going to send his son, Yahweh Shai, and the angels off that throne, man, to come punish the inhabitants of the earth for their iniquity. The earth also shall be disclosed. Her blood shall no more cover her slain. Man. So her blood going to no more cover the slain, meaning what? The elect. Because those are the slain of Esau. The same ones who they have made that crafty council to destroy. They've always destroyed us, man. So that, that that pavilion is spoken of right here in the 27th chapter of Psalms, the fifth verse. It says, in that time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion. Meaning what? He's going to hide the elect in what? The chariots, man. The chariots of the heavenly father, man. That's where you're going to hide us at, man. Okay? Let me get that. See? He's going to hide you in the chariots. The chariots of God. That's where you're going to hide you at. See all those little... See all those little round circles? Those are going to be chariots. You see that light that's being beamed? People, do you see little marks of people inside those beams of light being beamed up to the chariots? Those are the pavilions that we will be hiding in the electment. Okay? That's where the Lord says, come hide until that indignation is passed over, man. That thermonuclear destruction. See that destruction going on below? Right? And the angels are destroying people and they're saving the elect. Okay? It says, For in the time of trouble he shall hide me in his pavilion, in the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me, and he shall set me upon a rock, man. You know? You're going to be in the chariots, man. I waited patiently for 
before Yahweh and he inclined unto me and heard my cry. And that's what we're doing, we're crying out. He said, go out and sigh and cry. In the midst, uh, 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 sigh and cry. Put a mark on those that, that uh, cry in the, in the midst, man. For the abominations to be done in the midst of So we're sighing and crying, hoping that we get that mark of exemption. That's the why. It says, he brought me up also out of a horrible pit. The horrible pit is what? The slavery of, of America, man. This is, we're still in captivity. He brought us out of this horrible pit, out of the miry clay, and set my feet upon a rock. Because when you're in clay, well, it's, hard, it's hard to move, it's hard to maneuver, right? You're being stuck, and that's how it is in America, man. It's hard to maneuver in this place. When you have all these unrighteous decrees that they have set forth, everything that they do is against you to make you cut, to cut you out, that you be no more remembered as a nation. The Lord brought you out of there and set you on a rock. He's gonna set you on a high place, man. He's gonna set you up on a, up on a, up on a throne, man. Okay? He's gonna make you uh, uh, the leaders of the new government. And establish my goings. He have put a new song in my mouth, even praise unto our power. Many shall see it and fear and shall trust in the Lord Yahweh, man. So they're gonna see it, man. Because it tells you in Wisdom of Solomon, the fifth chapter, that they're gonna be amazed at the strangers of what? Our salvation, man. And the Lord's about to do a marvelous work for, for the elect men of Israel, man. And it says back in Psalms 27, for in my time of trouble he shall hide me in his pavilion, which we know what that is. That's the chariots. And in the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. So he's gonna hide us from that trouble when Esau bring it, man. Okay? Set me up upon a rock, and now shall my head be lifted up above mine enemies. So we're gonna be lifted up above our enemies, man. Round about me, therefore will I offer in his tabernacle sacrifice of joy. And I will sing, yeah, I will sing praise unto the Lord, Yahweh, Bashem Yahweh Shai. We're gonna be hollering Brakata Yahweh, Brakata Yahweh Shai, man. And these songs is, is Psalms, they are songs, man. We're gonna be we're gonna be speaking these psalms, different psalms in Hebrew, man. Get that joyful noise and joyful sing a joyful noise until Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, man. That's what we're gonna be doing in that day, man. Okay? Back in Psalms, uh, mm. oh man, I can keep reading on that. It says, Hear, hear O Yahweh, when I cry with my voice, have mercy upon me. And answer me, when thou sayest, seek ye my face, my heart shall see, uh, said, uh, my heart said upon, unto thee, thy, thy face, Yahweh will I seek. So we're going to seek his face by what? Reading these law, statutes, and commandments, man. Okay? Reading the law, statutes, and commandments, man. Watching, li listen to the, the our apostles and our elders, you know, sharing, sharing word with the brothers, talking to brothers, man. Just staying, staying in the spirit, man. Okay, though we walking in this flesh, guess what, man? We're gonna we're gonna be in the spirit. Okay. It says, verse nine: Hide not thy face far from me; put not thy servant away in anger. Don't kill us, man. When that time comes, man, because it's gonna be a horrible death to, to two thirds, man. Put us in that that secret place, man. Hide us away, man. Show us that mercy that you said that you had, man. That's what we're praying for. Thou has been my help. Leave me not. Neither forsake me, O power of my salvation. This is the only way we're going to get from the clutches of Esau, man. This is the only way we're going to come out of subjection. It's through Yahweh Bashem Shai. It says, when my father and my mother forsake me, then the Lord Yahweh will take me up, man. You know? Even though you say your father and mother forsake you, the Lord gonna take you up, man. He is he's your refuge, man. He is your strength and your power, man. In his name is a strong tower, and it's spoken in the Proverbs, man. That's why we're gonna always scream Yahweh, Brakata Yahweh, Brakata Yahweh Shai, Brakata Yahweh Yahweh Shai, man. 
because a bad time is coming. It's coming, man. That time of Jacob's trouble is right here at hand. If you don't have the Lord, you how about Shimmy? I was shy, man. Hey, man, if your conscience is still on these strongholds, everybody can be saved. And, and, and uh, uh, Cesare Bozier is your savior. Right, that, that white Jesus, if you still thinking that, that, the, that hey, John 3.16 is dealing with everybody. If your mind frame is still on the fables, which is spoken of in Timothy 4th chapter, if your mind frame is on them fables, man, if you thinking this, these scriptures are fables and not, and not, and not literal, then hey man, it's gonna be, it's gonna be a rough time. On Teach me thy way, O Yahweh, and lead me in the in the plain path because of my enemies deliver me not unto the will of my enemies man because if you deliver us to the will the ones who he delivered to the will of the enemies man it's gonna be death to you man Esau gonna have his way with you right he's gonna spit you up chew you out man and insert a chip and put you in subjection that you that you that you be under him man because it tells you in second Thessalonians he sit on that seat he think he got so he basically want to chip everybody and have you in subjection under him. And if the Lord turn you over to his will, man, it's going to be it's going to be a, a harsh reality going to come to you, man. OK. Deliver me not unto the will of my enemies. For for false witnesses are risen up against me and such as uh, breathe out cruelty, man. We're going to have those false witnesses come against us, man. He's going to deliver you up to the governors and all that, man. Spoken over in Matthew, man. People are going to be saying all kinds of uh, uh, lies on the men of the Lord, man. Okay? They're going to be